found a uh, cool little country road a couple of rides ago and I uh, actually made a video last week to show you guys the road and got home loaded into my computer and I had no audio the microphone just didn't work I don't know what happened I checked everything before I left the house today and it was working fine so we'll see I guess that's one of the worst parts about moto vlogging is you do like a whole day's worth of riding and then you find out oh my audio setup wasn't right and all of that footage is now worthless so this is the road right here Mega Tech PC here with another moto vlog for you. Well, one of my favorite back roads out in the middle of nowhere, South Georgia. Nice and hilly with some good turns. And usually not much traffic. Coming to you today while we still deal with this months long pandemic. Some dirt there, gotta watch out for. But yeah, everything's sort of going back to normal, which is, I mean, that's not everywhere, obviously. Different states are doing different things. I'm in Georgia, so I'm lucky. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's a holiday. I'm on a super bike. That's a cornfield. Things are good. careful of those freaking yellow lines they can be slick rear tire kicked out a little bit there yeah it's a nice beautiful day the official beginning of summer at least in my opinion. I don't know if that's fact or not. You can look it up. And it feels like summer. Although it's not too bad. It is definitely heating up. I think today is going to be upper 80s, lower 90s. Which is not the best, but... motorcycle crazy psycho motorcycle she's a monster I explained in my last video I just finished editing it last night and it'll be coming out I believe on Tuesday which doesn't matter to you because this video is not going to come out until weeks from now I likened this motorcycle to an angry bitch and I stand by that statement she can be really really good to you but man, when she bites, she bites. It's just a super, incredibly powerful engine in this bike. It's, it's really crazy. And I know that all leader bikes really have crazy engines at this point, but 
I love the character of this engine so much. You really do begin to see what people are talking about when they talk about machines that have passion. Most of the Japanese sport bikes, and I've ridden a bunch of them, really do sort of have a clinical sort of check all the boxes, conventional feel about them. They all have that sameness to them, which is fine. They're excellent machines. They really are. I, I, I never had anything bad to say about my Ninjas or my CBRs. There's just something about this bike that those bikes just didn't have. And it's not that it's faster. I mean, my Ninja ZX-10 was close to as fast as this, but no, there's just, the whole package of this bike, it, it feels special. It's so unlike any other bike I've ever had that there's a, there's a value to that. There's just something about the way this bike makes you feel that I don't think you'd really get on a BMW. I can't say because I've never ridden the S1000RR, but to me the S1000 is kind of like the German perfected Japanese sport bike. Like BMW took what Honda and Kawasaki and Yamaha and Suzuki have been doing for decades and just perfected it. But as a result, it still, to me, seems like a very similar bike. And I know, look, Honda has a great history with V4 engines, so it's not like Aprilia invented something here with the RSV4. When they came up with the RSV4, they didn't go in line for, which certainly would have made their lives a lot easier. I mean, this V4, there are a lot of upsides, but there's a lot of downsides too. It's really hard to package in such a small space. It gets really hot. The exhaust plumbing is a complete nightmare, I'm sure, for engineers to deal with. And then working on it is super difficult. Now the flip side of that, of course, is you get all the upsides of a V-twin in an inline four. So you get that torquey, down low, stump pulling power, but it doesn't just shut off at 10,000 RPMs. It keeps going all the way up to 14. And I don't want to make this whole point that I'm making about just the engine. I mean, it's not just the engine. It's just everything about it, the way it looks, the way it feels. It's unique. You have to remember, this is pretty much a 9, 10-year-old motorcycle at this point. The first RSV4 came out in the United States in 2010, I believe. It still looks roughly the same as it did 10 years ago. And from everything that I've heard, it looks like they're going to be coming out with a full redesign next year. Who knows, with this whole pandemic going on, it, that may get scrapped. Italy obviously was hit really hard. So uh, I don't even know if Aprilia is even open right now. If they're even open for business at the moment. Yes, it is definitely warmer than it has been on my last few rides. And I am going to be interested to see how this motorcycle handles the heat. of summer because it's it's something I've been kind of worried about over the winter is how warm this bike runs in the cold <laughs> so I can only imagine how warm it's going to get when it's hot out yes yes that's the uh, old Altamaha again gotta point out the rivers That river goes all the way to the ocean. This is about uh, 
60, 70 miles that way. Just hearing that engine is just life. Feels so good. That was a cardinal that I almost platted all over my face. There are a couple problems with this bike though that I could mention real quick. bike is super fast and that's great that's what it was designed to do and it does it very well but the problem of course is that our traffic laws were not designed with something like this in mind and this bike will do 180 miles an hour let's just just be real and it really doesn't take long to get there either if you rev out the gears to redline, you know, you'd be doing 150 miles an hour by the time you reach fourth gear. If you keep going, like I said, you'll be over 180. 180 is a significant speeding ticket slash jail time, even during a pandemic, I'm afraid. So basically what I'm saying is this bike is at the very edge of the envelope of performance to really feel what it's capable of you are just breaking so many laws that's uh that's a good reason why i went back to a 600 the last time i had a thousand the performance of a 600 is just so much more accessible you don't have to go 150 on a 600 to feel like you're going fast and as I said it's not a serious complaint it's the reality for any really any leader bike it's the same reality for a lot of fast sports cars you know if you drive a McLaren you're basically just wasting it unless you're taking it to a closed course or track because you really can't have the kind of fun that car is designed for on the public roads so there is something to be said basically about smaller bikes that have more attainable limits another interesting thing that i saw i think it was late last year that i saw this that Aprilia is coming out with a, a new middleweight bike which I think is a great idea unfortunately they decided to put a parallel twin in it which I think is a horrific idea I just wish that they would have shrunk down this bike give the middleweight everything this bike has just a just a smaller engine just less power you know you could put like a 750 cc v twin in it I don't know if it'd be worth it to put a, a smaller V4 in it. Obviously not, because that's not what they're doing. But I think it's a good idea. And it looks really good. So it would make kind of sense. They're releasing a whole brand new middleweight with new styling that that would kind of dictate the language that they're going to be going with moving forward. One of these days I'm going to stop there and read that and see what this cemetery is for. It looks like some kind of Civil War monument or something. I don't know. I, I've always been curious about that. There's no information on Google about it. I went to this very spot on uh, Google Maps and they don't have any, any info. I wonder if I'm the only one that does. Every time I go, every time I go for a ride, I like to go on Google Maps when I get home and just sort of look at the satellite view of my my route. I don't know why I do that. It's just fascinating to see an aerial view of where I've just been. I 
said earlier, we are unfortunately at the beginning of summer here, and you know what that means. I discussed it very much so in my very first ride of this bike. It rains every single day in the summertime in Georgia. I haven't had to worry about rain for like the past six months. But in the summer, for whatever reason, it could be perfectly beautiful like this one second and then the next second just pouring down thunderstorm and then it'd be sunny again in another minute summertime presents a lot of problems for motovlogging or just bike riding in general especially because i do like these long marathon rides where i'm i leave the house around noon and then i'm going to be out on the bike all day i'll be riding until eight o'clock that night in the summertime it's pretty much impossible to do that without getting rained on I don't mind getting wet. Sometimes a, a little rain shower is a nice refreshment when it's 95 degrees outside, but I just hate thunderstorms and I hate lightning and I'm hoping I'm not gonna run into any of that today. It's not supposed to rain, but there's still like a 10% chance. And as I, you know, I've mentioned it a million times, there's gonna be at least a 10% chance of rain pretty much every day in the summer. And those clouds look like they're coalescing rather rapidly. Another thing that surprises me about this bike a little bit is that I thought that it would be geared a little taller than it is. Now, not in first or second gear, obviously, those are really tall. But I mean in top gear, like sixth gear. One of my biggest complaints about 600s is that when you're doing highway speed, you're revving 7,500, 8,000 RPM. And I always reason that getting a litter bike, it's going to be geared taller, so you won't have that constant high revving engine going when you're just cruising on the interstate. But because everything is so track focused on this bike, you know, the, the transmission is the same. It's, it's track focused. That's why first gear is so tall. Because they want you to be able to use first gear on the track. like they're just trying to hit me. It's fucking birds. I've been riding for 22 years and I've never noticed birds like kamikaze into me as much as they are on this bike. I don't know if they're just drawn to the thing or what. Like moths to a flame? I don't know. It was another misconception I had coming from a 600 to a leader bike, I thought that the big V4 wouldn't have as much high speed vibration as a buzzy little 600, but that was completely incorrect. The handlebars on this bike are just as buzzy as my 600 was, and my hands still go just as numb. I mentioned that on my very first ride to this bike, and it's, uh, it's still the case. So yeah, the one positive about that on this bike though is that it's got cruise control so if your hands go numb you can always just flip on the cruise control and who wants to use cruise control though when you've got hills and curves to go around? Big Al's Country Market. When your stomach growls, think Big Al's. All right, Eric Megatech PC here. Just realizing that this gas station is closed on Sundays. <laughs> oh, Georgia. Only in the Bible Belt. Well, you find a gas station that's closed because it's Sunday. Ugh. 
Well, I guess I'll be getting gas there. So I'm up here in the middle of nowhere, South Georgia, which is basically where I live. I'm, I live in the middle of nowhere, and I just go to different middle of nowheres because I like to because it's fun I like finding new shit I like this road I don't, I don't know where this goes but I'm just going to go I'm just going to go with it so why not beautiful early summer day tomorrow's Memorial Day the official well in my head anyway the official beginning of summer and that's a stop sign for the railroad tracks okay interesting found a uh, cool little country road a couple of rides ago and I uh, actually made a video last week uh, to show you guys the road that I found and got home loaded it into my computer and I had no audio just the microphone just didn't work it, Something, I don't know what happened. I checked everything before I left the house today and it was working fine, so we'll see, I guess. That's one of the worst parts about moto vlogging is you do like a whole day's worth of riding and vlogging and then you find out, oh, shit, my, uh, my audio setup wasn't right and all of that footage is now worthless except as maybe b-roll for a montage or whatever so this is the road right here nothing particularly special about it i just like it as i said it's out in the middle of nowhere so Probably don't have to worry too much about cops. There are a few more houses than I'd like to see. I don't want to get people pissed at me. Flying through their neighborhood. But as you can see, it's pretty much just farm. And there's like little ponds and shit. Snake road. Blind hills like that. a really enjoyable little road. I never really talk about my gear on this channel. I suppose I should at least go over it. As you can see I've got some Alpine Star SP8 gloves. I just got these uh, brand new last year to replace my previous Alpine Stars SP8 gloves. They just, they're about five years old and really dirty and old. Just needed a replacement. And I love them so much I just got some more. My 
helmet is a Shuey X14 that I got back in 2016, so about four years ago. And it was my dream helmet at the time. Hey, she didn't pull out in front of me, that's nice. So yeah, it was pretty expensive. I also got the Cine 10C installed in it when I got it. So the whole all in the total price was like 1200 bucks, which was, as I said, pretty steep, but at the time it was my absolute favorite helmet. It just looks cool. Shoei's a great brand. They make great helmets, Japanese made. I got a, a tent advisor for it at the time and it served me well I mean it's a really good helmet it's not as quiet as I would like it to be unfortunately it's not really set up perfectly for moto vlogging I kind of had to just do some adjustments to it some modifications using gaffer tape but it works well enough um, and it's really comfortable definitely recommend Shuey helmets they're they're very good I've had AGV exclusively before this and AGV makes great helmets too but um, I really do love this Shuey it's it's just great I've got a couple of different jackets I'm wearing my summer jacket today because it's so flipping hot but they're both Joe Rocket sort of leather mesh combination jackets. My winter jacket is a bit thicker and heavier, obviously warmer, and uh, probably safer. It's also newer. This jacket here, my summer jacket, I've been rolling, oh my god, that guy just was all over the road. My summer jacket, this one here, I bought way back in 2007 when I got my first leader bike, my uh, ZX10. And I have been rocking this jacket now for what, 13 years? So hopefully jackets don't have like expiration dates or something. actually know what the models are of my jackets but they're good jackets they look good and they feel good and this one's nice and cool in the summertime my winter jacket has a waterproof inner lining that you can take out with a zipper so in the winter time that thing can keep me warm pretty pretty good in the summertime obviously I have to rip that damn thing out of there or I'd freaking melt for pants I wanted to get some Kevlar jeans but I couldn't find any in my size on Revzilla so I got some uh, I don't even know what they are I think they're speed and strength or something they're the sort of uprated denim so that and they've got padding and stuff on the inside that hopefully would keep you from getting too tore up but they're not as safe as I would like they're not super comfortable either I have to say they're that weird combination of too big and too small They do give 
at least some layer of protection. Certainly better than just a regular pair of jeans. And then my boots. I don't know, you can't really see them right now. But I got some TCX boots made in, I think they were made in like Bulgaria or something. They're supposed to be Italian. I guess it's an Italian company, but they're manufactured in Romania or I don't know, somewhere in Europe. And that was my favorite little road. Not much to it. It's not a special road or anything, but it's just nice.